Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nick Cooling and it's Valentine's Day today, so why not take a look at the 2001 slasher Valentine. So guys, this wasn't the initial plan <laughs> to do Valentine 2001. I really wanted to do My Bloody Valentine and I even pre-ordered the steel book from Amazon because I live in a small town. It probably wouldn't have been at any of our stores here and I was supposed to get it last Wednesday. Well, it got delivered to the next city over and it's been there for the last like four or five days on delay. I don't understand it at all. That's Purelator's fault, not Amazon's. But anyway, besides the point, unfortunately, I can't do one of my favorite slasher movies. But instead, we're going to be looking at 2001's Valentine. This movie is directed by Jamie Blanks and stars Denise Richards, David Boreanaz, and Mary Shelton. And a shit ton of other uh, females that look all like models. It's sometimes a little hard to tell who's who in this movie at times because there's so many blondes that all look like 10 out of 10s. It's like, which character is which? It's hard to decipher them except for the Paige character because she has darker hair. So the basic plot of this film starts off with uh, back in middle school and shows a, a dorky type of kid asking these girls out for a dance. And they all say get lost pretty much. None of them want anything to do with them except for one's nice enough to say well maybe later. So he goes and asks another chick that's over on the bleachers and she, she says okay and they get caught making out under the bleachers. These other bullies kids come up and uh ask what's going on and she says that he was essentially like sexually harassing her even though that wasn't the case like uh kind of like uh forcing her to make out with him or whatever so the other kids beat the shit out of him and rip off his clothes and that and you see him with a nosebleed that that one kid getting beat so then the movie jumps ahead 20 years later and we get to see these group of girls again and their adult years and uh Slowly, they start getting picked off one by one by this one uh, killer who wears a black trench coat and a cupid mask. And that's essentially your plot. You, it's kind of like a whodunit. You're trying to figure out who is the killer and whatnot. And right away, when we skip 20 years ahead, we uh, we follow Catherine Hagel or Hagel Heigels. I don't know how to say her last name's character. She's from Knocked Up and a uh, big actress. She's kind of like the bait and switch in this movie, almost like Psycho. We get to follow her around for the first 10, 15 minutes or so of the movie and then bam, she gets killed off and you're like, you figured she's going to be the main girl, the main final girl. And that's kind of confusing about this film. They don't really, it almost feels unfocused. They don't really know who they want you to follow in this film. They show you one chick for about 10, 15 minutes and her problems and her side life, her relationships, and then it will show another chick and it will show another chick and it will just go through all the cast of the five girls from the first. And it's even hard to remember who's who. Because I said that they all look kind of alike. And we only seen them as kids in middle school. And we're supposed to know exactly who they are as adults. It takes a while in the movie to really understand what's going on. And who we're supposed to follow. So I feel like it was kind of unfocused in that aspect. So since this is a slasher movie, let's get into the killer. So the killer's wearing this cupid mask, which we do see briefly in the middle school dance scene at the first. But he has this cupid-like mask on and almost this like black, long, like trench coat almost. Not too much to him, but I do like the fact that uh, after he kills someone, his nose starts bleeding through the mask. I found that was really cool. But then it's almost like, well, it's obviously the kid from the first because he had nosebleeds. But then they set things up throughout the film that makes you think, well, maybe it's not him. And as for the kills themselves, it's kind of a mixed bag. They're all decent enough. Some of them not so much on screen. But there's two I found really cool. There's that bow and arrow scene or the like the archery scene where he hits the girl like uh, one of the girls like two or three times with the arrows. And then she goes backwards out a window into like a dumpster outside. That was pretty cool. But my favorite kill was on the the sexiest chick that's what the, they dub her Paige she's in a hot tub and uh, she ends up getting trapped inside of it the cover goes over while the guy's drilling down through the top of it and he ends up nicking her a few times and it fills up with blood so she's pretty much under there suffocating trying to breathe through the little holes that he's puncturing while he's like pretty much drilling into her at the same time it was really brutal it was definitely the coolest kill to me in this whole entire film 
And this page character that dies, she was like the sexy bitch out of all these. But she was actually easy to differentiate from the rest of them because she, she had darker hair. And the rest of them all were all like these blondes running around. So I was like, I knew who she was every time. And this is a very much a late 90s, early 2000s style slasher. Like, I know what you did last summer or Scream or even like Final Destination. The characters just feel like we're stuck in that time period. Which at the time of this release... I'm sure people hated it and was like, this is lame, this is whatever, and I would agree with them. But nowadays, watching this 20 years later, it's like, it almost has that nostalgia value to it. Even though I never watched the movie back in the day, I never even heard of this until a few years ago. But just the way it's filmed and the way the characters are written in that, it feels so much like a time period piece. And that time period being the early 2000s, late 90s. Even to the cover, how they're all standing on the cover, the whole cast, all those horror movies back then had that, had the whole whole cast on the cover. So it's really a movie of the times. And just the whole reasoning behind the killings, like the motivation of the killer, it's kind of lame. We've seen it done over and over again. Uh, the kid who gets bullied wants revenge. You know, we, we've seen it just so many times. It's not very original at this point. And there's a lot of scenes that people might find be a bit draggy, whether they're looking for clues on uh, who the killer is or just when the killer is stalking one of their victims. It, it, it does move at a slower pace, but I feel like that sets up the tension. And what adds to that is the score of this film. While it's fairly, fairly a simplistic score, it's nothing original like Halloween or anything, it definitely adds to the tension in each scene and the atmosphere. So if it wasn't there, this movie would be really lackluster. But really, with this movie being kind of very unfocused and really targeted towards the slasher fans themselves, even though the kills could have been better, I don't think this movie is for everybody. You really have to be a diehard horror or slasher fan and or have seen this when it came out and you just want to have that nostalgia value for it. I can't really see everybody being a fan of this. I found it was okay because I am a huge slasher fan. It's one of my favorite subgenres, but it's definitely not for everybody. So I'm going to give my rating here in a few seconds, but stay till after that and I will discuss the twist plot ending and how I feel about it. So Valentine from 2001 had an okay cast, not the best character development, not the best kills, but a few standout ones. The motivation for the killer was kind of lame. But he looked pretty cool. I found, yeah, I like the look of him. And this movie is very much stuck with the times. Like, it's hard to take it out of the early 2000s and have it come out today. It just wouldn't work. But as saying all that, since I am a huge slasher fan, I did, I did enjoy this for the most part, even though it wasn't the best. But I'm still going to give this a passing grave of 6 out of 10. I feel like that 4.6 or whatever that IMDb gives it is a little harsh. I don't think it's that bad. It's definitely watchable. I, I had a good enough time with it. But again, I am a slasher fan. But I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. It's decent. It gets the passing grade for me. And yeah, I hope you guys have a good Valentine's Day. Now I'm going to get into the twist ending. So click off if you haven't watched the movie yet. So the big twist ending is... You got the main final girl at the top of the stairs and the killer just jumps out of nowhere at her. They both tumble down the stairs and before the killer can get back up, the main girl's boyfriend comes down the stairs and shoots uh, the, the killer uh, what I believe to be six times or something like that. It would have it would have been kind of funny to have that little uh, Halloween reference in there. It might have been six times. I'm not sure. But anyway, he shoots her six times and they reveal them. They take off the mask and they see it's one of their friends, Dorothy. Dorothy, the chick that uh, said that the other one was groping her, sexually harassing her back in middle school to, to that geeky, nerdy kid. And when I seen that, when you watch, see the reveal, you're like, that's kind of dumb. Because what, she gets nosebleeds too? Because the killer always had a nosebleed after they killed someone. And I was like, how, what's the chances of both of them having nosebleeds all the time? But then it ends with him hugging her while the other one's dead on the floor. The boyfriend and girlfriend. And while he's hugging her, he said, I always loved you. And his nose starts bleeding. Revealing that he was the killer the whole movie. And he just set her up at the very end somehow. I don't know if he drugged her or did what. And put on the costume. And then shoved her out at his girlfriend to make it seem like they were. she was getting attacked. I'm not too sure, but... 
I didn't even really pick this up the first time I watched it. I watched the ending and I was like, she's the killer the whole time? Then when I seen his nosebleed, I'm like, is that really him? But she was the killer? I was really confused. But I'm pretty sure he was the killer the whole time and he was just setting her up. Now, I'm not too sure how I feel about that. It was nice to have a twist in this film because I felt like it needed something like that to boost, to boost the, the entertainment value of this film. But I don't know if it was the best of choice the way that they, they executed this uh, bait and switch or whatever at the end. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. I thought it was okay. But let me know down below what you thought of this film in the comments. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Have you seen it yet? And like I said, I hope you guys are having a great Valentine's Day. That's all I got for you guys. Thanks for watching.